Campus Reform Correspondent at the University of Florida, and Brylin Hollihan is the chairman of the RNC's Youth Advisory Council. Welcome to you both. Emily, we'll start with you. How's campus been? What's it like? Good morning, and thank you so much for having me. Like you guys are talking about, on America's college campuses across this country, we've seen college administrations put forth these self-care initiatives and safe spaces to coddle hypersensitive leftist students. At the Leadership Institute's campus reform, we've reported how Harvard and Princeton elite universities have canceled classes, and Georgetown University provided milk and cookies and Legos and crayons to college students, 18 to 22-year-old adults. These initiatives sound like they belong in preschool curriculum, not exactly college curriculum. Uh, control room, we'll go to D04, question three, if we can, as we're looking at the election loss, Kamala Harris, and how some of these have responded. Uh, there is a USA Today op-ed, uh, Brylin, that is blaming Gen Z voters, calling them the biggest disappointment, adding it wasn't just young men who rejected Kamala Harris. She lost ground with Gen Z women, too. Um, if you wanted just to speak, if I understand this correctly, that you were able to vote for the very first time this year, is that right? That's correct. You know, I, I really think that these people don't need therapy dogs. They need a reality check. You know, what we saw in this election a few Tuesdays ago was a 17-point youth vote swing towards President Trump. That 17-point swing isn't a fluke. It's not an anomaly. It was a mandate. Gen Z is fed up, and we believe that Trump can fix this nation that Biden and Harris broke. And so far, we're right. I mean, he's on track to do more before he's inaugurated to help America than Biden and Harris have done in four years in office. The same people that are going to these safe spaces on college campuses are the same ones that were chanting death to America on the college campuses a few months ago that have dyed their hair blue and gotten the nose ring and are taking gender studies degrees. This is embarrassing. This is not what colleges should be focusing on. They should be focusing on teaching people what we actually need to know to go live in the real world, not to be coddled. Wow. Some interesting points there. Um, but look, Emily, I, I thought there were those TikTok trends. I mean, there were the viral videos of Kamala Harris dancing and falling out of the coconut tree. Did that not work on Gen Z? I am so proud of my generation for using their critical thinking skills and thinking about their futures and not letting some TikTok dances from the Kamala Harris team or celebrity endorsements. Beyonce, she wasn't enough to get the votes of Generation Z. These celebrity endorsements and TikTok videos and free handouts from the left just weren't enough to convince Gen Z to give up their futures. The last minute plea deals that we saw from the left, like Kamala Harris's $25,000 tax credit for new homeowners, student loan bailouts, or her fear mongering around the abortion issue, none of that was enough to wholeheartedly convince my entire generation that we needed to put her in office. A Pew survey uh, found this, that news influencers are mostly men, more explicitly identify as far right-leaning than left-leaning. Legacy media, as many know, is left-leaning. Uh, I wanted to ask you about that one, Brylin, and, and maybe what, what influences you? Again, if, if you don't mind me pointing out that you are a senior in high school, <laughs> so you'll be yes, considering sir. different uh, colleges, universities to attend. What is top of mind for, for, for maybe you as an 18-year-old looking ahead? You may not be thinking about buying a home right now. Maybe you are. But, but what is top of mind for you and what you look for when you, for your very first time walking into that ballot box? Yeah, I mean, in the next few months, I'll be you know, starting school at a new university. And I got to say that some of these colleges that are opening up these safe spaces are canceling classes because of an election that was two weeks ago. I think I'm about to have to cross them off my, my list of, of you know potential universities. What I will say about the, the Pew Research study that you put up there, when I joined the RNC, my message to President Trump backstage at, at a rally was very simple. I said, Mr. President, you have to win over Gen Z voters by reaching us where we are. The president did that. He understood to reach out through social media. He understood to do that organically through his own social media pages. We created his TikTok form and it was very successful. And also by partnering with influencers already on the platform, it paid off as we've noticed in, in very large numbers. Another point of not just, you know, this being an election thing, but actually something the president's committed to to this day as president-elect, he's appointed eight cabinet members so far under the age of 50. Eight. Donald Trump, as you pointed out, won this election thanks to youth voters. And he's clearly going to be a president for youth voters, giving us a seat at the table when inaugurated. It's pretty cool.
Yeah, that is exciting. Uh, not to mention the fact that he's authentically him. I mean, Donald Trump is Donald Trump in every setting. <laughs> and I guess Gen Z could, could see that and spot that a mile away. Emily Sturge and Brylin Hollihan, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. President